For the last three months, the whole world has been watching continuous action, violence, drama, etc. in Afghanistan. We all saw the swift movements of Taliban by which they won over the great Afghan nation just weeks after the US declared its withdrawal after 20 long years. With keen observation around the matter, it's clear that the situation haven't changed much from their first rule in 1996. We are all seeing the present situation in Afghan. But why is Afghan like this? Why all the violence and miseries are haunting the poor people in Afghan, even small children? To understand this, we need to know their past, their history. When we go through their story, it's really sure that they are not used to staying in a kind of situation or accepting a rule. Their history is full of deadly wars, coups, bloodsheds and what more. So in this video, I'll give you a brief history of Afghan, the rise of Taliban and how they became such a kind of mess. In the early 1950s, Afghanistan was under monarchical rule under King Muhammad Zahir Shah of the Barakzai dynasty. His general was Muhammad Daud Khan and in 1973, Daud Khan led a military coup, abolished the monarchy and declared himself as Afghanistan's first president and prime minister. And in between that chaos, members of the PDPA were killed. PDPA is People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan, which is a communist ideology based party. There was a widespread rebellion against the government and in 28 April 1978, Muhammad Daud Khan was overthrown from power led by a military coup of PDPA led by Noor Muhammad Taraki. This coup came to be known as the Saur Revolution. Following the coup, Taraki became the head of the state and renamed the country as Democratic Republic of Afghanistan. But the internal conflicts didn't subdue and Muhammad Taraki was overthrown from power by Hafizullah Amin in September 1979. And once in power, the PDPA implemented Marxist-Leninist agenda. They replaced religious and traditional laws with secular ones and made reforms on women's rights. It was even said that educating and enlightening women was one of the important subjects of the government. At the same time, the PDPA imprisoned and killed a lot of religious personalities. The PDPA also invited the Soviet Union to assist in modernizing the country. Soviet Union did a lot of infrastructures and also trained the Afghan army. In December 1978, the PDPA signed an agreement with the Soviet Union, which would allow military support for the PDPA in Afghan if needed. However, there was a widespread rebellion against the government in rural areas. Local people or guerrilla fighters who believed in Islam took weapons and fought the government. Those fighters came to be known as the Mujahideens. This was a time period when the United States of America and the Soviet Union were constantly competing against each other to get the world superpower position. So to fight the Soviet Union, America began to support the Mujahideens and provided them with money, weapons, training and other facilities and thus the local guerrilla fighters became a well-equipped rebel group. The Saudi and Pakistan were also supporting the Mujahideens along with the US by providing them with weapons and people. So on seeing that things are going out of control, finally the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan in 1979. Together the Soviet troops and the Afghan troops crushed the Mujahideens and a lot of refugees fled from the country. The harsh violence in Afghan continued for the next 10 years and in 1989, due to international pressure and a lot of casualties, the Soviet Union withdrew from Afghanistan. The Mujahideens won the battle and it was also a victory for the US over the USSR. The Soviet Union or USSR collapsed and got disintegrated to the now Russia and its neighboring countries. But things were not okay in Afghanistan. Pakistan's ISI continued to support the Mujahideens and a few more attacks led to the civil war in Afghan. Mujahideens got divided into separate parties and all were hungry for power. This war continued for a couple of years and several coups happened in between. Meanwhile, in 1994, a madrasa teacher, Mullah Omar, started a movement with his students to restore peace in Afghanistan. As the movement consisted of madrasa students, it came to be known as Taliban, which meant students in Arabic. They took over the cities one by one and initially there was peace. As the Taliban came to restore peace, the public also supported them. And at the end, in 1996, the Taliban defeated all of the Mujahideens and took power of Afghanistan. Slowly, their character changed and people understood that they were just like any other group, hungry for power. 
The Taliban was also supported by Pakistan for their own regional interest. People suffered a lot under the Taliban rule. Severe punishments were given for small crimes and public executions were practiced. Women education was denied and they were not allowed to go out alone in public places. This went on till 2001 when the World Trade Center in New York was attacked by Al-Qaeda killing around 3,000 people. The US got furious and demanded the Taliban to hand over Osama bin Laden, but they refused. So the US invaded Afghanistan in October 2001, overthrew the Taliban government from power and restored democratic government. The Taliban, Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups went back to their old guerrilla fighting, but the Afghan government was protected by the US and other NATO forces. These conflicts continued for the next 20 years and here we are now in 2021 with not a single foreign troop in Afghan and Taliban back to power. All these which I said now were the past and what we are seeing today is the present. But let's hope for a better future. Even though the Taliban says that they have changed and are peace-seeking groups, the reports from Afghanistan are not supporting what they said. Anyways, let's hope for the best.